started the virtual AFT, but we were starting to close down for the COVID, and we started getting word from our friends in other countries that COVID was how it was impacting them and what they were doing. And then I think you and I started talking to our um, people who are registered for the AIFT to at least through the first quarter. And all the way through November, we had conversations with people looking at the materials that we had and how we changed what we were doing to ensure that we met the CDC guidelines. Before we, it wasn't that we went straight to virtual. We really wanted to keep with the in-person training because that was, that was how the program was designed. So... Uh, Kathy and I were in constant communication and we were monitoring the CDC guidelines and, you know, trying to stay ahead of um, safety concerns. So we modified several aspects of our training. One was um, we were looking, we were conversing with, with venues directly, ensuring that we had enough space. So if we needed to book, a, you know, the next larger room to ensure that there was some safe social distancing occurring, we decided we were also going to be putting hand sanitizers all throughout the the training room. And then normally what we do for lunches is we would order almost like a buffet style lunch and then people could take what it is that they want. Obviously with COVID, we decided to scrap that and actually look at box lunches. So now each person would have their own individual lunch and there would be no cross contamination. And so we monitored that and when the CDC said, okay, that's it, no more, um, we had to basically, you know, connect with everyone and say, look, I know that we were taking these precautions, but now the CDC guidelines are telling us that we need to, to stop doing in person, not just, you know, um, for the center, but also we were, you know, ensuring the safety of the participants and the trainers as well. So we decided to basically cancel all of our in-person trainings for 2020 and had to quickly decide what our next steps were. Yeah, and I think that as we had conversations with um, individuals, participants who were attending the AIFT, they were so appreciative of every single contact we had with them, that we were engaging them and what, what would make them comfortable, what would be the best situation for them. And it was really when we had the information from the CDC that we couldn't have an AIFT, that we knew we had to move into the virtual environment. Well, I invited everyone who had been a trainer over the last two years and people who had deep understanding of appreciative inquiry. So it was a large group of people. Some people just could not attend because they had jobs that they were still working or, and they just couldn't fit into the timeline. But also that we were looking at those of us who had experience in education, especially in designing the curriculum for adult learning programs. And so we did ensure that we had those, those people in the room. And so we even brought in a person who had um, design experience, who had been a trainer, but new, a brand new trainer, had just uh, uh, completed her first uh, uh, training. And so she was brand new, but we were so lucky she was on board. And so I think that th that was really the only fundamental thing that I was looking for is people who had um, experience designing new programs and curriculum and actually and measuring whether they were successful. This was such an interesting experience because as Leanne Waddington, who is a core team member said, we were building the plane as we were flying it. And as we would make a decision on a software or a tool that we would be using, we'd get really excited and we would, you know, share that with, with the participants um, and those that were interested in the virtual AIT program. So we were constantly in dialogue with participants to kind of let them know where we were at and, you know, any new ways of doing things was shared with the group. And there was just this excitement because it was like we were just building it together. I, I think that's really important is that, it, it, you know, we all came into this sense of a little trepidation about we didn't know what was happening with the, the pandemic. We didn't know how long it would be. Those, some of us anticipated it would be quite some time and that we definitely needed to get something moving, but we didn't even have software when we first started out. We didn't know what the software would be. 
there were several suggestions and recommendations and it seemed like we would get, you know, we'd look into something to see how it worked and it was so expensive or so complicated or the reviews from the uh, people on our core team who would use that software, they were like, no, that really probably wouldn't work for um, the appreciative inquiry methodology that we use. So what, how could we do that? So we um, had a really lucky uh, experience of that our uh, person who did, designed our website had experience with a learning management system and he recommended it, suggested it, gave us a, a tour of just how it looked and then he began to design it. We all agreed that that's one we would go with and he just began to design it and then the uh, those who were designing the program itself, taking what we had on paper for the face-to-face and transforming that into a one that worked for a virtual environment. There were so many moving parts. So we had our IT guy who was developing the learning management system um, and embedding it so that it was seamless within our website. Then we had the core team that was developing the curricula and transforming it from an in-person to a virtual space. Then you have myself and, and Kathy who are conversing with participants and being the liaison with you know other trainers and there was just so much going on. The pandemic happened in March and yet we already scheduled it or made the announcement that we were going to go live with our pilot program in July. So you know everybody's working their own little parts and I remember that the IT guy was actually still building or, you know, tinkering with a, a few minute, last minute things while the, the core team is still trying to upload materials into there. And Kathy and I were trying not to have a panic attack, but it actually worked out really well. The team came together and we were able to hit the ground quickly um, with this new product. And I think actually the fact that we had to do it in such a quick turnaround and we had a ultimate confidence in each other's skills and we were constantly uh, conveying back and forth, you know, where, where was a little hiccup? And then how could we smooth it over? Could we buy some other software to kind of adapt? Could, you know, what, what was the material we'd use? Um, oh, we need some videos. Uh, who could we, uh, you know, ask to uh, create videos for us um, that would, you know, because we're not doing it face to face, that how do we do it in this virtual thing? So it's more videos, more reading, more work in addition to when we are with them in this, the um, synchronous in, environment. But it was just uh, absolutely incredible how everyone stepped up to the plate, monitored the timelines. We knew that we were gonna start. Uh, Jeannie and Joan were ready. Uh, they were you know, our front line and they were ready to do it, whatever was ready. And if we needed to make changes after each session, uh, before the next session, we were all ready and on board to do it. What's exciting about this is that we've been wanting to move Appreciative Inquiry Online probably, what, 2005, 2008? Mm -hmm. And, you know, there was a lot of trepidation from practitioner, consultants, coaches in the field thinking that this methodology could not translate into an online environment. Unfortunately, or fortunately or unfortunately, the pandemic kind of like forced our hand, but it actually ended up in to, it ended up being something wonderful and beautiful. And the program is actually probably stronger now mm -hmm. because of so. it. I think so. One of the, the outcomes of the uh, the training, this particular training, the Appreciative Inquiry Facilitator Training, is to uh, work on their practicum for the following year and to be certified. The practicums for certification are so much richer and so much deeper than ever before. It's just amazing to see how people developed a relationship within the course that they were able to maintain outside the course and then you know uh, co-build each other's practicum and really support each other. And they were able to ask questions much different than when we were um, face to face.